Good morning. Welcome to St. John's today. It is a bright, uh, a, a very bright day. It's, uh, it's hard to know where here to get out of the sunlight, and that's all right with me, really. But uh, very happy to, to see you here today. Today is the second Sunday in, in Advent, and so we continue um, with the, uh, the Advent wreath. And today, uh, in a few minutes, after we do our Advent candle litany, we are going to um, light the second candle, okay, and that is the, the shepherd candle. Let's begin by singing the two stanzas of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. In Advent, we light the second candle on the Advent wreath, the shepherd candle. Who would have thought God would first announce the birth of his son to lowly shepherds? And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. St. Paul wrote, Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many of you were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and the weak things of the world to shame the strong, and the lowly things, and the despised things, to put to shame the things that think they are something. So no one has any room to boast. The prophet Samuel went to Bethlehem to anoint David to be the king of Israel, saying, When God sent Samuel to Bethlehem to anoint one of the sons of Jesse to be Israel's king, God said to him, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, for the Lord God does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The humble shepherds had a major role the night of the Savior's birth. Upon hearing the angel's announcement that they would find the babe wrapped in claws and lying in a manger, and after they had heard the angelic choir singing, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, good will toward men, they did exactly what God wanted them to do. Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about, that they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. Lord, we too are amazed. We are amazed that it is your son lying in a manger, even though he is our king. Just as amazing 
is the fact that you have entrusted us, your lowly servants, with the task of sharing the good news with the world. O oh Lord, open our lips. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. I therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Restore us, O God. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You brought a vine out of Egypt. Restore us, O God of hosts. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Restore us, O God. The Lord be with you. We pray together. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. 
for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 2 Peter chapter 3. Do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved? and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locust and wild honey. And he preached saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn. Mercy, peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today I continue the sermon series, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Last week we heard about uh, Jesus as being uh, David, the, uh, the da and David's descent that uh, sits on David's throne forever. And uh, today we talk about uh, Abraham. Okay, is, is what we're going to do. Jesus, the son of, of Abraham. And I first of all want to read to you the promise that God gave to Abraham when he called him to go to the land of Canaan. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And we are also going to look at the first two verses of the book of Matthew, which begins the genealogy of, of Jesus. The book of genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac, the father of Jacob, 
and Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. People who do ancestry research often hope to discover that they are related to some great historical figure. Perhaps there was a, a distant relative of theirs that fought with George Washington at the Battle of Bull Run. Now, if you know what I just said, just keep it to yourself, okay? Maybe, uh, maybe it was your relative, or mine, it was mine, that fought with uh, uh, George Washington at, uh, at Yorktown and was there when, uh, when uh, Cornwallis surrendered, ending the Revolutionary War. Maybe your ancestor was uh, some swashbuckling pirate with a patch over his eye and a... Excuse me, my, my uh, microphone transmitter is acting as a pager or something. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I'm gonna start it over here. And sometimes the curiosity is just, well, let's see how far back we can tra trace our ancestral tree. Well, Jesus' genealogy in the book of Matthew goes all the way back to Abraham. And you know, Abraham was about, uh, we think, 2200 BC, 2000 BC, so a couple thousand years before Jesus. And that's the kind of genealogy that any Jew of Jesus' day would have been quite, quite proud of. 2,000 years for us, that'd take us all the way back to the reign of Caesar Augustus, or the time of, of, of Jesus. Yeah. Now that 2,000 years before Christ, yeah, that takes them back to the time when the Jews received this promise that God gave to Abraham that promised them the land in which they were, they were dwelling. Through the son that God gave to Abraham and through his greater son, Jesus, Abraham and all of his descendants, and that would include you and me as we're gonna find out, why we have inherited a better country. God's plan to make Abraham the father of many nations at the time that God gave him this promise seemed like an outlandish promise. God called him to leave everything behind, take his wife, his servants, his belongings, and go to a land that he would show him, okay? The promised land. He didn't know exactly where he was going, but God promised that he's going to make him a, a great nation that he would give him many descendants, even though he was well advanced in, in years. And then God caps it all off by saying that through you, Abraham, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. God promised Abraham and Sarah that they would have a son. Even though Abraham was old, even though um, Sarah was uh, well beyond uh, childbearing years, but they believed it, even though it looked like it was impossible. Abraham believed it, and the Bible says that God counted it to him as righteousness. And from Abraham would come Isaac, and from Isaac would come um, Jacob and Esau, and from Jacob would come Judah and the tribe from which the Messiah was, was born. And thus God's promise to Abraham would be fulfilled. Does anybody have a pager on? Or uh, something like that?
All right. Most of the people that do genealogical research are disappointed to find out that uh, all of their ancestors were just common, ordinary people. No one particularly famous in their, in their family tree. Just common, ordinary people. Abraham himself was really nothing special. While Sarah, at age 60, must have still been a very attractive woman, and the Bible says that she was, so that two kings took notice of her and tried to draw her into, her, into their harem, Abraham cowardly said that she was his sister. He didn't stand up for her honor. Not just once, but at least twice we, we see this. And so, uh, you know, what did Abraham do? He, he set this precedent of, uh, of lust and deceit, a legacy of lies and, uh, well, even adultery. Because when uh, Sarah suggested that Abraham take her, her servant girl Hagar and have a child by him because God hadn't given them a child yet, Abraham was quick to oblige and, and had that child out of wedlock. And unfortunately... That's a common discovery when people do their, their uh, ancestral research. Abraham would pass on to his descendants like Adam did, a legacy of hard hearts and sinful deeds. In Jesus' day, some people found great security in the fact that they were descendants of Abraham. They thought that being a descendant of Abraham gave them special status before God. They were certain that they could never be slaves of anyone. And of course that was absolutely ridiculous since uh, Israel had been slaves in Egypt for 430 years. They didn't realize that even then they were enslaved by their own sin. Like Abraham before, before them. Slave had, sin had entrapped them. And unless they were brought to faith none of the promises of God to Abraham would mean anything at all. God would not fail them. But they were failing. They were failing God. They were rejecting both the, the promise of God and the one that God promised. We are also children of Abraham. We believe that we cannot be saved by our own good works or our, by our our ancestry, or our obedience, or our good deeds. But like Abraham, again and again, we fail. We fall into the same temptations to sin repeatedly. And sometimes, like the Pharisees, we, we trust the idea that, hey, this is, uh, I'm, I'm from this family, or I'm from that family. I uh, live in, in that particular community. And uh, why well, my family's been a, a member of this church for 10 generations. You see, the difference between Abraham and uh, the Pharisees was just one thing. It was faith. True believers in Christ, true sons and daughters of Abraham, believe in the promises of God. They believe that God is fully able to do what he has promised. And so Abraham is a lesson in humility for all of us. Our hope is not in a birthright, but in a person who was born for us. God looked upon Abraham and Sarah in their need, and he promised them a son. God looked upon all of his children in their need, and promised them that he would send his only begotten son. God kept his promise to, to Abraham by sending Isaac. And on that first Christmas Eve, God kept his promise to all humanity by, by, sending, by sending the son of Mary, who was also Abraham's greater son. The promise that God made to Abraham is fulfilled. Every time a pastor makes a sign of the cross over the forehead and the heart of a, of a little child in, in baptism, God's promise to Abraham is fulfilled as 
the word of God is, is proclaimed and the Holy Spirit calls people to believe in, in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. You see, all the promises of God find their fulfillment in Jesus. Paul said, all God's promises are yes in Jesus Christ. And so like, like Abraham before us, we receive these promises by faith. During World War II in England, the most startling sound that you were probably ever going to hear was the air raid siren. For a nine month period between 1940 and 1941, the Germans attacked the, the British airfields and then they turned to attack the, the cities during their nightly bombing raids. And the sirens started softly and then they built intensity until be, they became a an ear-piercing and mind-numbing numbing, uh, whine. The constant threat of the sirens over those months led to heart-stopping fear every night when the sun went down. It was during that time that Reverend Eric Milner White was Dean of King's College in Cambridge. And understanding the fear that gripped the people, he wrote a prayer describing the uncertainty it goes like this. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the endings, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Don't you think those words could have been Abraham's words as he walked toward this, this new unseen land. But we're told that he walked by faith and not by sight. He walked forward. He trusted God was leading him and supporting him. During these days, in our times, we are beset by many uncertainties and, and many, many temptations. Life in this world means that we hear the constant blaring of, of mental sirens. They don't signal that the bombs are falling, but rather they, they signal doubts and fears as we worry about the, uh, the word that we're gonna get from the doctor or how much the car repairs are gonna be or viruses or, or other diseases. We live with anxiety over the, the future our trust is strong in God one minute, and the next minute it's weakened or it's gone. We become more afraid of living than we do of dying sometimes. But God forgives our fears and our doubts for the sake of Jesus. The Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, sanctifies us in the true faith in Jesus. Even when the news and everything around us tells us that we should be full of doubt and fear, but we stand strong in faith. St. Paul wrote, for in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. God has made us sons and daughters of Abraham through faith in Christ Jesus. We're the heirs of that promise there in Genesis 12 that God gave to, to Abraham. We have a better country. No, not the US, but we have heaven, the land of promise. Each day, we courageously walk by faith and, and not by sight as we await the fulfillment of this promised land that lies ahead for us on the day of the resurrection of all flesh. And so we boldly claim Abraham as our father, not because there was anything special about him, but rather that like him, we believe the precious promises of God and we find his promises fulfilled in his greater son, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise now to go to the Lord in prayer. So now, by your Son, lead us into straight paths. Bring us out of the bondage of our sins and plant us securely in your eternal promises. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, in your blessed patience, you sent your prophets and apostles, pastors and teachers in all times, that sinners would not perish, but rather reach repentance and find comfort in your word, which alone will stand forever. Preserve the servants of your church. Give to your congregation and all congregations an increase of hope that we may await the revealing of the new heavens and new earth with lives of holiness and godliness, diligent to be found without spot or blemish and at peace. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, preserve your gift of marriage against the ravages of sin the schemes of the devil, and the raging of the world. Bless the couples and the families of our congregation. And Lord, we also ask that you would bless in those who have, who have lost their spouses, those who are divorced, those who are single. Lord, we pray that you strength, strengthen us all in love and care for one another and establish us in the foundation of your word. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, your word alone endures forever. The nations of the world rise and fall before you. Even kings and rulers are like grass before your breath. Preserve us from placing our trust in princes and mortal men. Give us leaders who will rule after your good pleasure, keeping order and protecting life, that we may live in godly quietness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of hosts, hear us on behalf of those for whom we pray now. We ask your blessings upon Carolyn Walther, Lord, as her, her strength seems to be fading. And Lord, uh, you have, by your mercy, through your word and sacraments, kept Carolyn uh, faithful throughout her, her life. And now, Lord, we, we know that you will do the same even now. Keep her, Lord, um, in the palm of your hand. And uh, we have your promise, Lord, that you will, you will never let any fall from your, your hand. Lord, we, we give you thanks that uh, Jane was not uh, seriously injured in the car accident this week. And that she can lead us on the organ bench even today, Lord. We, we praise you for that. And Lord, we also pray for the family of Jackie Acton, whom you called to glory this past week. Lord, in their, in their sadness, uh, shine the light of the hope of your gospel that uh, Jackie confessed Jesus Christ to be her, her Lord and, and Savior. And Lord, help her family now too to con continue to, to confess Jesus as a source for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive the trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed. He took bread and when he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you, this cup is a new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you, body and soul, to life everlasting. The peace of the Lord is with you. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Here in God's house, and I pray that uh, you will continue to remain COVID free so that uh, you might uh, do the things that you need to do in, uh, in your life. And once in a while, I, I see somebody here that hasn't been here in quite a while, and I say, welcome back. Glad, to, glad that you've uh, rejoined us. And we pray that the Lord would uh, allow us to continue to to do this. Um, on Christmas Eve this year, we're gonna worship at 6.30 and, and at 11. And then the next day, Friday morning, the 25th, we'll worship at nine. The uh, sermons in all three of those sermons, all three of those services will be the same, okay? And so if you come on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, you're gonna hear the, the same thing. And hopefully you won't have my uh, my eye watch uh, trying to <laughs> trying to call Rowena Hotel Hotel. Um, why it did that? I I just I have no idea. But that's embarrassing. So I'm I'm sorry about that. Brian Oberdeck has something he wants to share with us. The year 2020 has brought a number of changes for us, uh, rather unexpectedly. How wonderful that uh, our God is not taken by surprise by any of these things, um, and that his plans are unfolding as he intended. Um, it does, however, prevent the children of the school from presenting a Christmas program, as is our regular habit. And so emailed out this week um, was this coloring sheet and this set of Advent devotions they're also available at the doors and in the church and school office. So as we um, count down towards Christmas, there are scriptures and devotional thoughts prepared by the children. And did you know that adult coloring is a thing now? So uh, each of these devotions corresponds to one figure in this Christmas scene. And so as you read the scripture, you find that in the picture and color that one in. Children are also invited to color along. 
Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. Also, the Lord called uh, uh, Jackie a Acton, uh, the wife of, uh, of Bob Acton, to her heavenly rest uh, this past week. And so uh, that funeral will be on Tuesday morning. But uh, unfortunately, during COVID times, that's got to be a, a private family service is, is what it's going to be. They will have visitation on, uh, at the um, Caesar Bean Blossom Funeral Home on Monday, like noon till eight or something like that is, is, is what it is. And so you can uh, go there and pay your respects to the family at that particular time. Any other announcements, Diana? Last day to order your poinsettias for uh, Christmas, right. Um, if you'll just uh, remain s seated for a moment, I just want to hear Jane play the, uh, the postlude today, okay? She's been playing such great postludes, and Parvin has too. I just want you to, to sit and, and hear them rather than we beginning to talk during them. Thank you, Jane, very much. Very regal sounding Advent music. The Lord be with you.